When it comes to special effects, I have to admit I'm a bit of a purist, preferring the likes of real, tangible sets, creatures and other clever tricks of the camera over millions of quid spanked on CGI. Now, I'll hold my hands up and say that there are plenty of films which have done the whole green screen dream very well, but when computer generations are bad, they're really bad. And sometimes it doesn't make any sense either when, for example, a successful film franchise ends up looking worse than the original. Very rarely is it down to lack of budget, so it begs the question of how does this even happen? Well, let's take a look, shall we? With this in mind, I'm Jules Whatculture.com, and these are eight sequels with visual effects inexcusably worse than the original. Number eight, The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing is one of the touchstones of practical effects, with a better use of body horror than what goes on in my bedroom. But then, in 2011, we got The Thing, a prequel-slash-reboot to the 1982 classic with a regurgitated plot and a confusingly identical title. Initially, the preboot was going to use practical effects to throw back to the original, but then this was rejected when the director thought that it looked a bit like an 80s movie. Because, I mean, fuck your heritage, right? Surely if you're making a prequel to an 80s movie, isn't having it look like an 80s movie a good thing? Ridiculously, the filmmakers actually removed all of the practical effects, making the film look like an early noughties animation fest, and a bad one at that. Number 7. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix the CGI in Harry Potter was always pretty good, and as you'd expect from a movie with such a high budget. Well, for the most part, at least. After the high point of the Goblet of Fire, the Order of the Phoenix stumbled badly as David Yates, the director, clearly overestimated just what CGI could do. New to the technology, he threw everything he could at the screen, recreating the Hogwarts we loved, but accentuated with the unconvincing magic and stupid flying things that you would likely see out of a George Lucas special edition DVD. The speaking letter looks like a poor knockoff of the one in Chamber of Secrets that was made five years before, and any flying scene makes the green screen look painfully obvious. Luckily, Yates got his act together for his later films, but this was weird, and it looked little better than the first film. Number 6. Jaws 3 For all the jokes about the rubber shark, the first Jaws is actually quite convincing. We didn't see the monster properly until an hour and a half in, even then it's only sparing shots that only serve to build the tension. And those who say that it looks too rubbery with lifeless eyes have clearly never seen a real shark. I mean, just look at Shark Dating Simulator XL, which I covered over on the gaming channel. Woof. Compare that rubber lover to Jaws 3, though, and you'll be calling it a masterpiece. This shark is so unbelievably fake that it makes the wooden acting from the rest of the cast seem absolutely animated. And the general effects are nothing short of damning. It doesn't seem to deter the film, though, as there's no subtlety in showing the shark. Instead, all it does is just throw loads of guts on top of it to try and cover it up. Bad form. Number 5. Psycho 2, 3, and The Beginning any follow-up to Alfred Hitchcock's masterful Psycho was always going to risk coming off worse than Adam Cleary does in a boxing match with the YouTube comments of these videos. Even with the best special effects that money can buy, you're not going to beat the horror that Hitch planted in the audience's imagination. Coming over two decades later, Psycho 2, 3, and the TV movie The Beginning hit during the early 80s love affair with slashes, so naturally had a rather heavy amount of knife action, people getting impaled, stabbed through the mouth, and having their hands all lacerated. Lovely stuff. Seeing Norman Bates in full killer mode was actually a cool idea, but the execution is awful, particularly thanks to the comically fake dummies they use as victims. Number 4. The Mummy Returns You can't talk about bad effects without mentioning The Rock's career-making role as the Scorpion King in The Mummy Returns. He does a lot of scowling, a lot of shouting, and then in the end, jumps the goddamn shark and becomes a literal scorpion. It's so bad it's good, but from a technical standpoint, it's so bad that it's f***ing bad. The movement looks so awkward, and he's got more shine to him than all the baby all in the WWE. Somehow, this flick cost $100 million to make and looks so bargain bin that it's a wonder the franchise carried on after. Actually, I've just realized that $100 million is more than two towers cost to make. That's f***ing unbelievable. Number 3. Superman 4 – The Quest for Peace Thanks to the first two Superman movies being produced at pretty much the same time, the effects don't actually differ that much. But when Superman 3 flew in a couple of years later, things were different. The tone was lighter, and the effects were no longer cutting edge. But that was nothing compared to what happened with The Quest for Peace. Notorious for producing low-budget films, new studio Canon Films severed the film's budget, leading to a plot far overreaching its financial means. They even stooped so low as to use shots from earlier Superman films and even repeated them again and again and act like we wouldn't notice. It was bunk. Bunk, I say! 
Number 2. An American Werewolf in Paris For all its black comedy and creepy ghost makeup, An American Werewolf will always be remembered for its transformation scene. The moment when the moon comes out and David turns into a werewolf has become a high point of the genre. But then, 15 years later and only tenuously linked to the original, a sequel came out. Sadly, despite attempting to make the transformation sequence show off the best modern technology had to offer, it failed hard. The body bends in ways that even in gothic worlds is unreal, and the hair just looks like Sully from Monsters, Inc.'s pubes. All in all, a terrible example of a film trying too hard. And number 1. Beneath, Escape from, Conquest for, and Battle for the Planet of the Apes while Planet of the Apes has gone down in history for that depressing twist, at the time the main talking point was the ape makeup. It was incredibly convincing and it allowed audiences to believe in this backward world to make the final reveal so shocking. Then, in the exact opposite of how the movie industry currently works, the sequels got less and less money and the effects dropped in significant quality. First, extras were given simplistic masks, then slowly more important characters devolved to have creepy motionless faces. The cuts were horrendously obvious. All I can say is thank God for the reboot of this, which has not only repaired the franchise, but has become world leading in its effects department. Now that is a monkey man I can believe in. Also, apparently I look a lot like Bad Ape without my hat on. Hello there, I am the second best Ewan to be involved with Star Wars, and this is Watto Culture, your one stop Ewan, shop. Ewan, yeah, what? We're not what, calling it that, what, we changed it. What will we change it to? What Culture Star Wars, just SEO, isn't it? So. I, I suppose you are right. Well, hello there again, and welcome to What Culture Star Wars, a brand new channel dedicated to exploring the galaxy far, far away in the classic What Culture style. We got lists, we got news, we got editorials, we've got ups and downs, and just like the big yellow text said earlier, we'll be covering everything to do with Star Wars past, present, and future. It doesn't matter whether you're a prequels kind of person, an original trilogy purist, or if you just really love the sequels. If you love Star Wars, this will be a safe positive space to come and relax, chug some blue milk and maybe even have a death stick or two, and yeah, just have a good time. We'll be kicking things off with weekly reviews of the upcoming season of The Mandalorian and have already got a selection of Star Wars themed playlists for you to enjoy based on content that's already online at What Culture Gaming and What Culture to keep you entertained in the meantime while we transform this place from a Death Star 2 Return of the Jedi looking half thing into something more ominous and Star Killer looking. Like the base, like Ilum with the big gun out. We we don't have a gun. In the meantime, it would be very droopy McCool of you if you could subscribe to the channel and follow us on social media so you don't miss any of our uploads going forward. That's all for now though, I've been Ewan, and until next time, may the Force be with you. Bye!